So you can see that we have the Docker file and that we will use Ubuntu and 20.04, which is LTS version, long time support. Then you can see that we install Telnet D in order to uh, have the Telnet daemon. I also install a Beam the editor in case I need to edit anything inside. That's not strictly necessary. And systemctl, because we want to start uh, the service using systemctl. And finally, we get, uh, we do apt get clean, so uh, we don't waste any space for this layer. Then here we add the user. This is a very convenient way to add the user with the disable password. And then we use uh, change password, the command chp um, ASSWD in order to batch change uh, usernames and passwords. And we only change the username telnet with the password telnet. Obviously, this is for this test. Uh, you should have like uh, the proper password. And well, I don't recommend you to use uh, Telnet because it's, it's not encrypted. Uh, but just in case, um, that's to demonstrate the, the Python code using Telnet that sometimes is useful to access uh, certain devices or to establish uh, connections, um, for example, to a web server without using the HTTP. And we expose the port 23 and then when we start the container, um, the system CTL start in it will be performed and then we will have an infinite, an infinite, infinite loop. So the idea is that um, the container does an exit. We have uh, build Docker, which uh, is, is just um, a simple tool that builds the, the Docker and remove the image every time that we build. And uh, we have the Telnet demo, which is the, uh, the demo that um, will connect by, via Telnet. I have hard coded here the username and password. You can also make it ask by command line. And if you want to ask for a password and not echoing it, you can, you can use the get pass um, package with the get pass function that ask in Linux, Mac or Windows, it asks for a password and doesn't display the, the keys that you type. And I will perform uh, the commands hostname, you name dash a, ls dash uh, dash h a l and exit to exit the container finally. Um, so that's it. Let, let's, be, let's build the container. So I, I will use my simple script that helps and I will need to run a sudo. Okay, as I already had it uh, installed, um, it has um, not done anything, basically. I have already built this image. Um, that's because, um, sorry, here. Yeah. That's because I removed the RM. But if I removed, how is that? It went so fast. It was using cache. Oh, I see. I see, yeah. So, um, sorry, I forgot this uh, because I, I commented this. So it's not built with um, without using the cache, even if I remove the image. So it's so it's very fast because uh, it's using everything that was cached, which is which is great for this demo. So you don't have to wait. And then finally, um, we are gonna we're gonna start it. As you can see, we can copy this. Now it's running the container. If I wanted to stop it, I can press Control C and it will stop because we are specifying the interactive parameter. So, um, oh yes, I have to remove it. Okay, 
So let's do this trick. And now, okay, so now I open another terminal. I go to the same directory. And from here, I'm going to launch my Python program. Telnet demo. And as you can see, it has performed the commands that we specified, which is hostname. Uh, this is the host name of the container. Um, you name dash uh, a and an ls. Uh, so, for example, if we change the container and we sorry, uh, if we if we change the commands that we request to the to the server via telnet, for example, we may add after ls df dash h to see the um, available disk space on slash partition. So that will be exactly and the disk space free this plate is this one, which is really from the from the host. So that's it. Uh, I find you. I hope you find this simple code very convenient to know. Telnet lib forms part of the package included in Python three, so um, you can use it without installing any library. Oh yeah, it's not used because um, I have commented those lines. Have a nice day.